Okay, so people are just coming in, but um, I just want to welcome you all to this online presentation for the MA Religion and Global Politics. Uh, it's lovely to see you here. Uh, I'm going to give you a presentation of the, the program and some of the facilities that come with being a student at SOAS, and then we're going to have plenty of time for questions um, at the end. Um, if you're not able to use your microphone, um, that's absolutely fine. You can put any questions that you've got um, in the chat function and I'll, I'll see those and, and pick those up. So anyway, um, very welcome to a kind of virtual SOAS at the moment. Um, I'm the programme convener of the MA. My name is Sean Hawthorne and you're very welcome to email me with any questions that you have, any advice perhaps you might want um, to seek about your personal statement if you're applying or any really any questions to do with um, the degree. So do feel free to email me. I'm also very happy to have one-to-one -one appointments with you um, on Zoom. I'm hoping that you can see my screen. Can you just put your hands up if you can see my screen? Yes, okay, that's marvellous. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, just in terms of really what the, the focus of this degree is, it's very much focused um, on examining the relationship between um, religion or religious traditions and um, political formations, whether those are states, nationalist interests and so on, um, taking largely a contemporary focus, but also, of course, never forgetting that the contemporary moment is always informed by um, history. In particular sets of histories, particular relationships with power, particular regional uh, differences, and so on. So we have created a degree where you're really able to delve deep into the connection between religion and politics in the contemporary moment, as well as um, historically. Another, I guess, quite unique element of this degree is that it is very much multi and interdisciplinary. You're able to take modules from um, every department in the school, as well as, of course, within the Department of History, Religions and Philosophies, which is where the degree um, is based. Now, because SOAS is a specialist institution focused on the areas of um, Africa, Asia and the Middle East, the focus of this degree, um, again, quite uniquely, is um, uh, focused not on a European context, although we don't ignore that, given particularly the history of colonialism and shaping so much of the kind of global world order, but we really want to encourage our students to engage uh, with the very specific and rich traditions from the rest of the world. As such, you're able to develop in this degree a regional specialism, Perhaps you're interested in um, India, perhaps you're interested in Nigeria or perhaps uh, Saudi Arabia or so on, or just more broadly, perhaps the Middle East and so on. Um, you're certainly able to select modules that enable you to develop that regional um, specialism and also um, uh, to learn a language associated with that region. But you may also perhaps be more interested in developing a more thematic um, specialism. Perhaps you're interested in um, minority religious groups or you're interested in um, human rights as they pertain to um, negotiations between religious communities and um, legislative bodies and so on, and you're certainly able to do that um, in this degree. Um, in terms of the, the kind of value or the what this degree will help you to achieve kind of after the degree, there's really two kind of main tracks that students go into um, as a consequence of doing this degree. And that is that they're engaging with some sort of career development, perhaps wanting to shift um, career focuses into an area that connects religion and politics, whether that's consultancy, NGO work, um, and so on. And we put a lot of work into ensuring that you're well equipped and well prepared to pursue careers um, in those directions. Also, for example, um, journalism and so on. Um, but another strong track, of course, is that many of our students go on to do research degrees, PhDs, and get also a lot of support in helping you kind of shape your ideas towards that end. Now, in terms of the structure of the degree, um, you have to take uh, 120 credits um, of taught 
modules. That means in the classroom, doing coursework assignments um, and so on. Uh, you have to take a core course and it's a course that I teach that's called uh, Religion and Global Politics Theories and Themes. Sorry, I'm just trying to admit people into the... Okay, good. Um, that's compulsory. That's worth 30 credits. You then must take 30 credits of the modules that are in um, religions. Um, and, and I'll show you the list of all of these in a minute. And then you must take 30 credits that um, are from a, a thematic or regional list. That leaves you with a further 30 credits that you can select either from the religions list, the thematic and regional list, or perhaps you want to use that to learn a language and you're able to do that as well. Um, most of our credit uh, modules are divided up into either 15 credits or 30 credits, and you can just build a kind of combination in, um, uh, in consultation with me as the convener of the program who can give you some advice about really what you want to achieve from this degree and the kind of modules that will really help you um, do that and, and speak to your interests. And then all students on the program have to write a dissertation of 10,000 words on a specialist research subject. You work um, with a supervisor who has expertise in your area of interest. Um, and that um, then really kind of pulls all of your interests together um, and, and you complete that by the end of the year, which ends in September. So the program runs from September to September. Obviously, if you're doing it part time, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, you would do your dissertation, either your second or your third year, depending on how you're registered. Now, the, the list of um, religious options or options in religious traditions um, are as follows. You can see that we have quite a widespread um, of different religious traditions that you can specialize in, whether that's Judaism, whether that's Islam, whether that's um, Hinduism, Buddhism, um, Chinese Buddhism, Chinese um, religions, African thought, and also um, Zoroastrianism. But also there's a, a thematic course on death and religion, which really looks at different religious traditions approaches um, to death and, and the kind of afterlife and soteriology and all of that kind of stuff. So you have to select up to 30 credits from that list, but you can of course select up to 60 credits from that list. Then when it comes to the thematic um, or regional modules, again, you can uh, choose modules that come from all of the other departments um, in the school, whether that's development studies or history or politics and international relations. And so you can build together a program that helps you to really narrow in on the, on the questions that you have, particularly around either a region and its religious and, and political culture or um, themes that connect very closely to um, what we understand to be um, religious traditions within a political uh, context. All of this information is um, on the website. I'm very happy to, in the question time, come back to this list if you want to take a bit longer um, to have a look at it. Um, now, more practically speaking, when you're a student here, we'd like to make sure that you're well looked after and we have various avenues in which um, we ensure that that happens. Uh, we have a very good, um, very conscientious um, set of student support services. Um, these are, you know, range from help with finance to housing to career support, but also uh, to support for any um, disabilities or mental health issues, uh, things like that. Um, they're a really wonderful resource um, when you're here in London. Uh, working, it can be an MA, can be quite a stressful degree, and they're there um, to provide you with as much support as you need. You also get a great deal of academic support and guidance from me as the convener, from your um, lecturers. You get assigned an academic advisor as well, who, who will meet with you at least once a term, talk through your goals, talk through any difficulties that you're having, and ensure that you're getting the support that you need. And then in addition to that, we have um, 
a, a sort of learning and teaching unit that is there to help you kind of brush up on your academic skills, uh, essay writing, knowing how to read large amounts of text, um, various other kind of study skills support as well. They run workshops, but you can also have one-to-one -one, um, advice sessions with the members that work in that uh, department. And that can be um, a really helpful um, uh, resource. Perhaps if you're returning to university after a, a while out, that, that's a place to go to to ensure uh, that you're able to really kind of make the most of your time with us here at SOAS. In terms of um, campus life more generally, we have a very vibrant student union, which runs um, many events, many debates, has many kind of societies that you can get involved in, whether you're interested in um, political activism or perhaps you're interested in um, you know, making friends and doing work on, on societies that are engaging with you know, perhaps South Asia or the Middle East. Um, or more fun things like, you know, sports and, and other forms of cultural engagement. All programs at SOAS uh, so have student representation. Uh, that means that you're able to feed in to how the degree is, is going. You're able to meet with me. You're able to meet with um, other members of the department, attend departmental meetings, and really kind of speak to uh, the things that you would like to see happen at SOAS and we really kind of welcome our student input in that regard. SOAS is a research intensive university and to that end we have a large number of research centres in our department connected to the study of religions but there are of course also other research centres throughout um, the school and as postgraduate students you're always very welcome to attend the events that they put on whether those are uh, conferences, seminars, workshops, um, with visiting speakers and, and all of that kind of stuff. So you really kind of get a sense of the state of the art in the particular field that you're um, interested in, meeting researchers from all around the world. Many of our courses um, also arrange for visits to centres of, of religious worship and, and practice in London, sometimes beyond. We're very lucky in London that we really kind of have the whole world here. There are many, um, many religious communities here with whom we have very warm uh, relationships. And it is a way, I think, of ensuring that the work that you do at SAWAS isn't particularly abstracted. It is. It remains about people, their values, the things that matter to them and how they orient themselves to um, the world. As a SOAS student, you also get access to all of the University of London libraries, you get access to the British Library, and uh, many of our courses also uh, make a great deal of the museum collections at the British Museum, which is just around the corner, also the Victoria and Albert Museum and other museums related to the regions of Asia, Africa and the Middle East, and you often can get behind the scenes um, and see some of the collections there and kind of talk through their relationship to the, to the um, subjects that you're studying. And then, of course, we have an absolutely outstanding world-class reference library um, housed in SOAS, which is um, a very special library in as much as it is mandated by the government to ensure that it has collections that cover all published material related to Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. And we have some wonderful archives of students. You're always very welcome to go in and have a look at them, really kind of um, get your hands on, you know, even historical material, manuscripts, and, and so on. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, place to be. Now, as far as what students go on to do in the aftermath of this degree, the MA Religion and Global Politics, really is very diverse what students do. Um, many go on to work with NGOs doing development work, um, the Red Cross, for example. They get involved in teaching at higher education or further education. Many get involved with government research and outreach, working as um, consultants, researchers, and so on. Also working with thin think tanks on policy development, journalism and media, and so on. And as I said earlier, many of our students also go on to do PhDs uh, after they finish their degree with us. And it's a degree that prepares you very well 
either for professional development or um, for further research. As far as the fees and funding are concerned, um, we are in fact currently uh, setting up scholarships particular to students um, for, sorry, students in our department. Uh, so go to that website and, and, and watch that space for announcements that will be coming up soon, but there are already existing scholarships that you can um, apply for, for the program. And there um, I give you a kind of overview of the, the fees for the program, you're able to enroll either full-time, part-time over two years or part-time over three years. Um, most of our students tend to either enroll full-time or part-time over two, two years. And then um, in that time, you just divide up your required modules um, across the, the two or three years. And I think that's all I have to say in this kind of whistle-stop tour of um of the program so i'm just going to stop sharing i can see that there's stuff going on in the chat um okay i'll just work my way through these but if you want to put up your hands and ask questions um as well you're very um welcome to um there isn't a, as as katie says um, there isn't a session for a phd in religions and philosophy but i'm very happy to talk to you um about whatever your interest is what the process is for a, applying for a phd um as well uh, so do just um drop me an email and i can help you kind of get that that moving okay so that seems to be all of the questions in the chat any questions that any of you have that you would like to ask don't be shy there's plenty of time as well Hopefully you can see where to raise your hand. Is there a rough idea of how many weekly contact hours? Yes, sure. Um, most modules have um, sort of between two to three contact hours of teaching. So that might be a two hour lecture and a one hour seminar, or it might be a one hour lecture, one hour seminar. Uh, it really depends from module to module, but maximum three contact hours per week. And then, um, there's also uh, you're able to have kind of one to one sessions with your lecturers in their office hours as well. So all lectures hold office hours and you can um, uh, pop in to those whenever you um, want to. A couple of years ago, of course, on Jane Logic Philosophy is offered, but it's not anymore. Um, is there any chance it will run again? There's a slight chance we're working on that um, at the moment, trying to get um, some endowments so that um, that kind of course can run. The member of staff that you might wanna get in touch with um, is called Peter Flugel. He teaches that and his email address, I'm just putting in the chat. I do contact him. Uh, yes, um, all you have to, with regard to um, language modules, in fact, I can probably just find that for you now. Sorry. Um, right, it's okay. Okay, here we go. It says undergraduate um, open options, but um, don't worry about that. If there's an um, undergraduate option being run, there will be a postgraduate option for that language being run as well. about the structure of the academic year, when do we start to tackle the dissertation? Um, so there are three terms in the year. Uh, usually the first two terms are taken up with um, your taught modules, uh, quite intense. You'll have a lot of kind of, there's quite a high workload. And so most students don't really actively start writing their dissertation 
until the third term through to uh, September. Although we do encourage you to start being supervised um, from the second term when you choose your dissertation topic, we assign you um, a supervisor and then you begin um, working with that um, supervisor. Any other questions? Uh, I think that came to me, Katie. Um, Marilena, um, the recordings will be emailed out to you after this um, event. You want to know more about scholarship and funding. Um, there's a, a dedicated scholarships page. I'm just going to post the link um, here. Sorry. So there are quite a lot of scholarships offered by SAAS. There are some that are particularly from people from particular regions, people working on particular topics, some more general ones. And as I say, we're currently developing scholarships for students on the programs in our department as well. Is the 60 credit dissertation not included in the 120? That's correct. So in total, you do 180 credits. Uh, how much of a jump would you say master's level academic is from the kinds of things we do in the third year? Would you say it takes a while to adjust to the difference? That's an excellent question. Um, it depends on quite a lot of things. It sort of, first of all, depends on whether you're kind of shifting disciplines. So if you did, I don't know, economics for your undergraduate, and now you're moving into religion and politics, it will take a little while to kind of adjust to the different way of um, doing things. But I think um, a third year um, undergraduate year is usually fairly good um, preparation for master's level. Although, you know, we do make sure that we start fairly, um, not simply, but, um, you know, we do recognize that um, master's level is a step up um, that you might not feel like you're particularly um, prepared for it. We make sure that the first few weeks we're kind of introducing you both to the fields, but also to the, to the kind of, um, what would the word be, the kind of skills that you need to, um, to, do the, to do the work. I should say though, I'd say that the workload for a master's degree is quite a lot more intense than that of a, a third year undergraduate degree. And just in terms of the amount of reading, particularly that you'll have to be um, doing every week. And I would sort of recommend that you just kind of treat it as a nine to five job. And that's usually good enough. But it also helps to kind of develop um, really good quick reading skills and we do kind of teach you how to do that. Any other questions? Under the pandemic. Ah, oh, that's another good question. Um, at the moment we're doing hybrid teaching which means that some of our um, offerings are online and some are on campus and what we're trying to do is um, do the lectures online and then have the seminars uh, in person. And that seems to be working quite well. Next term, the plan is uh, to, to move more and more to online um, teaching, sorry, not online, sorry, on campus um, teaching, but obviously we have to follow government advice um, and regulations. And so when those change, then we always have to change our plans as well. But the intention at the moment, I think, 
is to try and, and put as much on campus as we can, whilst ensuring that people that are unable perhaps to come to the UK or perhaps who are shielding have an online option available to them. If taking it as a one year program, is it feasible for students to also work part time less than 10 hours to fund living in London? Um, that's absolutely possible. And a lot of people do it. I think you should just be prepared to um, not have a lot of fun in the year. Sad to say. I mean, mostly your contact time in a, in a given week will usually be um, between eight to 12 hours. And it's really the kind of um, learning that you do by yourself that takes up the time. Any other questions? I'm very happy to stay here as long as you like. Well, actually only up until 11 because I have to go teach. Teaching on campus, I've got a seminar to run. Okay, well, if there aren't any more questions, um, I think we can probably wrap up. As I say, I'm just going to put my email in the, the chat again um, so that you can feel free to contact me whenever you want. Your questions, you need advice, I'm really, really happy to talk to you about that, have a, a Zoom appointment, etc. Okay, thank you all so much for coming. Hope you have a lovely rest of the day. And um, yeah, thanks for coming. Bye-bye.